Hey everybody, Riverside recently released a new update to their platform. It's a new magic feature. This time, it's magic audio, which, as of March 2024, is still a beta feature. So it may be out of beta when you're watching this, so keep that in mind. After the demo, I'll tell you why I feel like Riverside might be the company that really disrupts the podcast editing space. So this is how Riverside, they promoted this release. Our newest beta is here to give you studio quality audio, no matter where you are or what you're recording with. In one click, Magic Audio cancels background noise, removes reverb and echo, and adjusts EQ settings. And it drives me crazy when a company like Riverside uses the word echo in this kind of context, knowing full well that echo is not what it's treating. But I'll end my rant there. And I just want to repeat that this is a beta version of this software or this feature, and I'm sure it will improve over time. Riverside's MO tends to be to drop new features when they have the raw technology figured out, and then they'll refine it and shape it over time based on user feedback. Personally, I'd prefer that they take a little more time and provide, I don't know, some basic functionality before release. A good case in point was their transcripts and magic clips. They were released without the ability to correct spellings, which to me seems kind of baffling. I should also note that magic audio can be applied to not just Riverside recordings, but also existing recordings you have from somewhere else. You can upload audio and use magic audio to process that. And that's basically how I'm doing everything in this demo. I uploaded a few clips, applied magic audio, and downloaded them into Hindenburg. While I was processing the clips, I found that the processing time seemed to vary quite a bit, and it didn't seem to be tied into the length of the file. Some short tracks took almost as long as a 60-minute track that I tested. So let's dive in and hear how this does. So here we are in Hindenburg. I'll play the raw audio first, and then we'll compare Magic Audio to Supertone Clear, Ascentize DX Revive, and Cedar Audio's Voice X. The only true competitor to Magic Audio is going to be Ascentize DX Revive, because in addition to noise and reverb reduction, it does do EQ and spectral balancing, some sort of spectral work, very similar to what Magic Audio is doing. Clear and Voice X only tackle noise and reverb reduction. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, and this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, and this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, and this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy, and this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. No, I think it's, no, well, I think you hear it, but in the congressional side, I mean, I think the administration has been strangely silent about it. I mean, it's very important in our relationship with India, but they don't really talk about it. They just want to talk about, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is, this is very important. And, you know, I, I could see at our conference in India, they were surprised. Not, they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, I, you know, 
at zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is this is very important. And you know, I, I could see at our conference in India they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is this is very important. And you know, I, I could see at our conference in India they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is. This is very important, and you know, I, I could see at our conference in India they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is this is very important. And you know, I, I could see at our conference in India they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, we built uh, quite a bit of notoriety. We, uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves with respect to application security, we saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, we built uh, quite a bit of notoriety. We, uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, we built uh, quite a bit of notoriety. We, uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, we built uh, quite a bit of notoriety. We uh, we were focused on really changing the way that organizations protected themselves uh, with respect to application security. We saw a pretty big gap in the market where there was an opportunity to get closer to protecting applications and APIs by being directly in those things rather than around them. So we started a company. Uh, we built uh, quite a bit of notoriety. We And for one last test, I like to see what these tools do with pretty good sounding audio that doesn't need a lot of work. The first thing I want to say, though, Brian, is you are not the only person who is dealing with this at all. This is very common, what you're talking about. People who've been in business for decades run into the same issues you're talking about. So it's not a, it's not a Brian-specific issue that's going on. The first thing I want to say, though, Brian, is you are not the only person who is dealing with this at all. This is very common, what you're talking about. People who've been in business for decades run into the same issues you're talking about. So it's not a, it's not a Brian-specific issue that's going on. So after trying this out for a little bit, Riverside's Magic Audio, it reminds me of Adobe's Voice Destroyer. I mean, it's... I think it's called Enhanced Voice, but Riverside's Magic Audio is hit and miss. It does a good job of reducing the noise and reverb, but it does struggle with the same sorts of things that Adobe's Voice Enhance does, and that's the corrective EQ. It changes the voice just too much for my liking. In some of these cases, it changes the qualities and balance of the voice so much that to me, it doesn't sound like the same person. Or maybe it's a characterization of them or an AI version of themselves, but it doesn't sound just like them. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I suspect this tool will get better. 
but as of right now, it's just not that good. It will be good enough for many of the do-it-all-themselves podcasters out there, which is likely who their target audience is with this and many of their other tools. It does struggle with really bad audio. It seemed to struggle with audio that didn't need a whole lot of work. It's just not smart enough to know when to stop. And that sort of results in an overprocessed result, which as a podcast editor, that's not what I'm looking for. And I can't really see myself using any cloud-based tools regularly because they're just so inefficient. Having to upload and wait for things to process and then download it, if I have the choice, I'll choose a plugin every time. And as a podcast editor, Riverside is one of the companies that worry me because I think they are one of the ones that will disrupt the field the most. If we look at what they've already rolled out, it's been really stripped down, easy to use AI centric features like magic audio and clips or transcriptions, summaries, and text based editing. They're clearly trying to build the easiest to use all in one platform for podcasters. But the thing is, they've been listening to customer feedback since the beginning. And there's been a lot of feedback that their editor is too basic. What if these tools are essentially beta tests and product research for something bigger to come? It's only a matter of time before someone figures out that missing piece with text-based editing. We've already seen Hindenburg, DaVinci, and Premiere add transcriptions and text-based editing to their software. So we're seeing a lot of movement there. It's only a matter of time before someone solves that missing piece. And are you ready for when that day arrives? If you're a podcast editor who works for others, consider joining the pro group at Tanziaster Academy. This is where we talk about topics like this and help you plan and prepare for the future. We brainstorm ideas and look at ways that we can stay ahead of this wave and future-proof ourselves. I'll give you a little hint, and learning video editing probably isn't going to help you as much as you think it will. So what do you think? Do you think Magic Audio is any good? Are you concerned about Riverside's aggressive push to release new tools to make it easier than ever for podcasters to handle it all themselves? Do you feel that text-based editing will never be good enough? Let me know in the comments below. And I apologize for my cat yelling outside my door for the last few minutes. He gets a little needy when he doesn't get to sit in my lap all day. So he's voicing his unhappiness with that. But otherwise, I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you next time.